So, ngayon naman for the last example, let me have this problem. And I want to illustrate this para mas um, magkaroon kayo ng visualization. Uh, so, this problem is one way on how we can um, generally explain what happens between heat exchange, especially when the movement of fluid is cross flow. So, ito is meron pipe and then uh, itong pipe na to is meron siyang fluid na nagpo-flow on the inside. So, that is um, air. So, that parehas air yung dumadaan dito sa um, tube na to. And then, itong tube na to, kung mapapansin natin based on the problem. So, we have here, um, I'll make it uh, something like this. So, ito yung kanyang um, inner diameter and then meron siyang outside diameter kasi um, siya ay with a certain thickness. Okay? So, basically, itong um, inner diameter niya, let's represent it as Ri. So, Ri is equal to, um, uh, let's make it inner diameter kasi yun yung exact given. So, that's 2.5 cm. And then, this 2.5 cm, meron siyang certain thickness na stated din sa problem. So, ito dito na lang. So, meron siyang certain thickness na um, 0 0.8 millimeters. Millimeter. And then, yung length nitong pipe na to, syempre, mag-extend pa to dun sa hanggang dun. So, this is, uh, the length is 3 meters. Okay, and then, of course, this um, pipe is made up of copper. So, sa loob nito is, of course, meron tayong air. So, air inside ng pipe. So, yung air inside, meron tayong pressure na 207 kilopascal. And then, meron tayong temperature dyan na 200 degrees Celsius. And yung ating velocity ng fluid na pumapasok is 6 meters per second. So basically, yung air inside the tube is flowing at 6 meters per second. And uh, yung construction ng material na tube na yun is copper. And then yun nga, medyo mainit yung ating air inside. So papalamagin siya ng atmospheric air. So basically, meron ditong air outside. So kung makapansin nyo, di ba ganito yung um, nangyayari during convection. So... Meron siyang air and then yung pressure doon is 1 atmosphere kasi siya ay yung surrounding natin. And then yung temperature doon is 20 degrees Celsius and flow. It flows normal to the outside of the tube with a free stream velocity of 12 meters per second. So yung velocity or free stream nito is sometimes we represent as VE pero V na lang ngayon. That's 12 meters per second. So kung makapansin nyo, this is the tube and then that's a cross flow movement. So um, yung ating air... So, ayun. I mean, so something like this siya. Okay, so, kung meron kayong bilog, so basically, yung ating flow is ganun siya. Kasi nga, cross flow yung ating movement. Eh. So, ganun yung almost, um, ano niya, movement niya. Okay? So, cross flow is also known as a flow that is normal to the surface. So, ang question dito is, calculate the air temperature at exit from the tube. What would be the effect of reducing the hot air flow in half? So, ang tinatanong dito is ito, kung ano ba yung temperature on the outside ng heat. So, let's make this TH inside, and then we're looking for THO. So, let's make it TCI para mas magets natin ng uh, maigi. So, yan yung ating general um, conditions na need or mga general um, given na, na kuha galing sa ating problem. And then, what is the next approach in this kind of problem? So basically, ang kailangan natin is THO. So para makuha yun, di ba, we know that a certain equation can be used. That's Q is equal to UA and then delta T um, M. So that's basically true for heat exchangers for general. But um, as you can see here, this is not actually a heat exchanger, but uh, a construction that is made so that it can um, behave 
as if it's a heat exchanger. So parang imagine yung isang nagtake lang tayo ng isang tube and then inexpose natin siya into a certain atmospheric air kung saan nagbe-behave sila as heat exchanger. So basically yung ating uh, log mean temperature difference um, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na that's counter current or co current kasi una sa lahat it's a cross flow and then pangalawa is um, wala tayo dun sa ating type ng heat exchanger hindi natin siya alam. So, hindi natin siya pwedeng makorrelate regarding dun sa ating FT. Okay? So, next, um, if we would look at our area, so, pwede man tayo makukuha ng area dyan knowing na given tayo ng ating mga dimensions here, that's 2.5 cm and then 3 meters. As well as U. Kasi, yung U natin before, we used to give this value of U, but um, in the end, yung U naman natin is, it can be computed by using the general formula dun sa atin before. Kasi yung U natin is basically, if it's, it can either be UI or UO. And if it's UI, we'll be using um, 1 over 1 over HI. So, um, ito, itong expression na to, this UI is obtained from the idea na, um, I'll be drawing this again. So, diba, this is something like the tube of, our tube of, ano, yung pinapakasapan natin na tube. So, basically, kung um, gusto natin hanapin yung unitong tube na to, we know that if there's a fluid right here, so, dun sa boundary condition nito, and knowing na meron tayong bulk temperature right here, so, alam natin na meron din yung inlet um, convective heat transfer coefficient. That's why we, uh, we have something like it here. And then, of course, by virtue of um, combine the resistances, we know that this um, small thickness will offer some resistance with that. So, uh, basically, we add so we add the area of our inside, which is um, ito yon, and then we multiply that with the product of the ratio of the um, the, the radii, and then divide this by 2 pi and then the thermal conductivity and then L. So, if you could remember this general formula, so ito yung ating ginagamit dun sa ating mga um, si uh, mga cylindrical na arrangement. And, uh, diba, this is simplified further by canceling this um, 2 uh, the pi D right here. So, kinakancel natin siya kasi that's how it works for our area. And then we have the ratio of the areas for the inside and then the outside. And then we multiply this by the reciprocal of our um, convective heat transfer coefficient on the outside. So, ito may um, na experience na temperature right here on the outside. So, meron din yung HO. And then, siyempre dito yung ating resistance offered by the um, this material. So, that's how it goes for our U. So, we can compute for U. And this is UI. So, pero pag UO naman to magiging HO lang to. And then, we just represent, we just interchange U and U with I in this case. So, yun yung ating expressions for U. So, pwede siya makuha. And the next question will be, what is delta T? And, of course, what is Q? Now, um, to answer that question, if we're looking for Q, so we can see right here na, um, let's say, nakuha natin yung mass flow rate given dun sa ating velocity and, of course, dun sa ating inner diameter. So, we can determine M or mass flow rate. But, um, if you would look at our um, delta T na kailangan, which is the difference between these um, temperatures on the inlet and then the outlet of our um, air, which is hotter, we can see that we don't have any outlet temperature because yun kayo ating ating hinahanap. So, kung yung hinahanap natin at wala rin yun, so basically, um, we're at a dead end para sa problem na to. Kasi, if ito, uh, mas lalo tong mahirap. Kasi, remember, this is on the outside. And do you have any idea on uh, where this velocity came from, knowing that it's on the outside? K kasi, the only way that we can solve for the mass flow rate of this air, air on the outside is to know where it came from. And, and knowing that it is from the surrounding, so basically, yung mass niya, or mass flow rate niya, or, uh, yet, 
correct, volumetric flow rate or mass flow rate would be infinitely many kasi uh, basically kasi uh, wala tayong constant uh, way para malaman kung ano yung mass flow rate. So if it's really big then um, we could just say na mataas yung ano uh, or hindi natin siya malalaman talaga kung ano yung ating mass flow rate with this. So I mean the velocity could always stay the same but the mass flow rate can be a large depending on the condition of the surrounding. So with that, um, let's first try to evaluate our U and then problemahin natin yung the rest once we obtain U muna. So knowing U, so we have a lot of computations to do here. Kasi we need to find HI and then HO based on our um, conditions right here. So remember, HI is on the, as the air on the inside. So if we're looking for HI, we know that this HI came from the nozzle number. So we know that the Nusselt number again is HD over K and we know very well that this is a function of the Reynolds and the Brundle number in any given correlation based on the Paris Handbook. So if tandaan nyo siya, and I hope you tandaan nyo siya, meron ditong air na nag-flow on the inside of the pipe and syempre kung may nagpo-flow na air on inside the pipe um, um, in an industrial setting, so we know that that's a type of forced convection. So we'll be using forced convection to identify our value of convective heat transfer coefficient. So, di ko na siya ulitin dito kasi um, nagawa ko na siya before. So, I've already pre-calculated all the values that I need. So, um, palabasin nyo na lang din siya sa inyo um, pag -re recompute So, these are the values for our air um, along the tube. So, syempre, this is air um, specified by both pressure and temperature. So in this case, I won't have any saturated property, but um, I need to do double interpolate that in the given value. So for 0 0.1 megapascal, which is in your lower temperature, uh, we have the density equal to 0. So basically, these are the values of 0.1 megapascal obtained at 200 degrees Celsius. And basically, we need uh, the value that is um, at 0.207 megapascal. So I need to interpolate this again after I've obtained the value for 1 megapascal. So so 1 megapascal, since yun lang naman yung available sa Paris natin, so we have the density equal to So now that I have all the values for 0.1 and 1 at this 200 degrees Celsius temperature, so now I need to, to find the value at 207 kilopascal in between these. So I'll just have to interpolate in between these values for 0.207 megapascal. So finally, yung mga kailangan natin ngayon is the density, of course, in kilogram per cubic meter. So I can convert ko na siya, that's 1.5. 711 kilogram per cubic meter and by the way uh, if you want to make a short or a fast calculations to find your for example gusto lang mag assume um, na mga values para mabilis so you can always use this um, density is equal to pm over rt provided na they are ideal gas at a condition given but um, we know naman very well in thermodynamics that if gases have a very high temperature and extremely high pressure or even extremely low pressure um, it doesn't behave ideally kaya we need to account those um, factors na nagpapalayo sa sa ideality that's why I prefer to use this table instead of um, using just the formula for our ideal gas okay so the next one is the specific capacity so we have um, 0. I mean, 1,024.9579. So the units is in Joule per kilogram Kelvin. So kaya matas yan kasi yun yung unit. And then our um, viscosity is 2.5953. That's the negative 5 pascal second. And then lastly, we have K that's equal to 0 0.0381 and then watts per meter Kelvin. 
So again, we need to find the Reynolds number in this case, and then of course our Prandtl number so that we can find kung ano ba yung gagamitin natin na equation for our hi. So in this case, the Reynolds number is always a dv rho over mu. So um, upon substitution, so we have the diameter which is the inside, so that's 2.5 over 100 times our velocity which is 12 or 6, should be 6. And then we have the density which is the average, so that's 1.5711. And then we divide this by mu which is um, 2.5953 times 10 to the negative 5. So this gives us um, 9080.4531. And that's a turbulent flow. So this one is turbulent. So I'll be using an equation that is um, turbulent. And then we have the CP mu over k. Mu again is the absolute viscosity or the dynamic. So CP we have 1024.9579. And then our mu is 2.5953 times 10 to the negative 5. And then we divide that with our k, which is 0 0.0381. So this gives me a value of 0 0.6982. So that's unitless. Now you might be wondering why I used 200 degrees Celsius instead of um, using 200 plus 20 and then divided by 2. So basically if we did that, um, that is the film temperature, but it's not actually the average value. And knowing naman na uh, we have to use bulk um, properties at forced convection, so we don't have to like um, do the film temperature for this one. But instead, we need to do the bulk temperature, that is the average of the inlet and the outlet. But take note again na kung kailangan natin ng average ng inlet and outlet, if we don't have any value for our outlet, so it's practical to use just the inlet, knowing naman na wala. So you might be thinking naman, if that's the case, na uh, the values would be different knowing na pababato for sure. And you're not using the average, so I so para maisip nyo, it is better na gamitin lang is yung film. But uh, the reason is that the first one, we'll not be using the film because kailangan is bulk. Pangalawa, um, in such cases where the temperature is very high, and then yung ating, namang, um, yung ating uh, tube is exposed to a certain surrounding, na hindi tayo sure kung ano ba yung changes na brought by this um, environment, we're not sure if it will really give us a very um, different uh, values for our heat or the outside heat. So it is safest to assume that we'll be using THI for this case, but I'm not saying that it is the bulk, I'm just saying that um, it is a best it is a better choice of um, evaluating these properties okay so yun siya kaya ginamit natin is 200 instead of using the film kasi yun nga again yung first reason is that uh, you use film temperature when you're talking about force con i mean natural convection when the flow is external and then this bulk temperature is usually used when you're dealing with temperatures that are um, for I mean fluids that are forced inside a pipe so ganun siya so basically we'll have, meron tayong Reynolds number and Prandtl number so again we'll be using uh, this equation I hope tandaan nyo siya or alam nyo siya kasi nahapis so that, that's just chapter 5 and then you go to f um, force convection So this one is the force convection and then you can read about here. So right here we have fully developed flow in transition and uh, region between laminar and turbulent. So that's the turbulent flow. Uh, turbulent flow. And then we do have this uh, F and then Reynolds number and then Prandtl number and then this K which is TB over TS is 2.45 for gases. But remember since we're using the same temperature for this, this just uh, results to 1. So you just need this F, R, E, and then P, R. So F or the fanning friction factor would be uh, somewhere in uh, these values kasi ina-assume lang natin lagi na smooth yung pipe knowing na wala namang binigay sa atin na um, property ng pipe. And then, okay, so using that uh, equation, since di ko na naman siya um, 
papakaulitin pa para isolve it kasi we've been using that. So, um, the value of our nozzle number using that equation would give us an equivalent of 27.5518. Um, and this dimensionless number is simply equal to HT over K. And then this uh, H is actually our HI. And then the diameter is the inside diameter. That's 2.5 over 100, which makes, which makes it in uh, meter. And then our K is basically the uh, the thermal conductivity average. That's 0 0.0381. I mean, uh, the thermal conductivity at 200. So that's 0 0.0381. And then this is, in, this is in watt meter Kelvin. Okay, so this thermal conductivity and then this H, this makes our HI equal to 41.9890. That's watts per meter squared Kelvin. Okay, so that is for our... Um, First condition HI. Now the next one would be HO. Kasi ito namang AI and then AO is ve are very easy to find. So we solve for HO in this case. Okay, so for HO naman is since she is external flow, so diba this is external and then she I cross flow dun sa ating cylinder. So we need to find the film temperature right here. And then the film temperature is simply the average of uh, 20 which is the temperature of on the outside of the, the surface and then yung inside and surface natin which is 200 degrees Celsius so this makes our um, film temperature equal to 110 degrees Celsius and we need to evaluate all those all those properties for our second case here right here for HO so the density so at 0 0.1 megapascal Kasi ito lang yung meron tayong available data. So we have density is equal to 0 0.0334. And that's small per, small per decimeter cube. Now for um, 1 megapascal, And then we need the value which is at a pressure of 0.101325 megapascal. So basically, complete na tayo, tayo ng ating mga unnecessary values and Take note that this is an external flow, not a force convection. I mean, this is also a force convection, but external flow. So I don't think I have given you some example like that in convection before. So let's go back with the Paris handbook and then check on this convection section. So in this convection, you would uh, notice at um, this page, external flows for single cylinder um, in cross flow Churchill and Bernstein recommend this equation so we'll be using this to solve for our problem here and there, here is the equation so um hindi ko naman papakita kung paano ko sinabsujit kasi um, malinaw naman dito just uh, follow this equation that we have it's just the f it is, it's just a an equation that is a function of the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number so you just have to substitute all of these values and um, before that we just need to find our Reynolds number that's simply dv rho over mu and then for the Prandtl number that's just cp mu over k and by the way this um, d is actually the um, outside diameter in this case because it's an external flow so that's uh, the outside diameter and then v and then density that's mu so knowing that this is the outside diameter, we have 2.5 cm, so that's the inside. And then we add um, 2 times the thickness of that converted with the same unit. So this makes the outside diameter 
and then the velocity is twice the hot fluid so that's 12 and then the density is I think that's 0 0.9 um, um, 0 0.9815 and then this is completed with mu which is 2.2093 times 10 to the negative 5. So this gives us a Reynolds number of um, 100, uh, 14,180.7269 and of course this is a dimensionless number. So same with CP, mu over k and that's the prime number. Just substitute all of this value. We have 1013. 0.8083 So now that we have all the values for our um, Brandon number, so we can now solve for this and the answer is 0 0.70 so knowing all of this, and uh, here is the equation for the Nassault number, so we can solve for the Nassault number and upon substitution to this equation, we'll be able to get a value of the Nassault which is 64.8013. And this is equated to H and then the outside diameter and then over K. So this makes our HO and then out, the outside diameter is this expression so that's 2.5 plus um, 0 0.8 times 2 over 10 over 100 to make it in meters and then divided by k which is 0 0.0320 so this gives us HO which is equal to 77.9565 that is in watts per meter Kelvin squared Kelvin okay so um, let me just check if I'm consistent with the first unit of H okay so we have 41.98 for the first H which is HO and then I mean HI and then for HO we have said 7.9 so now we're left with uh, the final um, expression of the resistance which is this um, area 1 LN and then K so we've got no problem with areas since they are re really easy to determine but the, the last thing that we need to determine is the thermal conductivity of our material which is um, copper. So we can always look at our thermal conductivity table right here at um, um, section 2. So we can check on the thermal conductivity temperature for metals and then to be presented with this just copy copper and then we know that we'll be evaluating that on our film temperature so our film temperature is 110 so basically that's um, 393 uh, I mean that's um, 110 so that's 380 uh, plus minus something so at that um, film temperature so this is uh, let's say at the film temp so our K of copper is 393.011, that's watts per meter Kelvin. So finally, we've completed uh, the necessary requirements or the major properties that we need. So let's just plug in all of these values right uh, through our original equation. So we have, we'll be using the inlet right here. So we have um, ui is equal to 1 divided by 1 over hi which is 41.9890 and then we add uh, the area 1 is actually pi d um, pi inner diameter times l so, th so we can just write uh, the inner diameter here because remember we have also pi right here and then this L so it cancels out and then what's left around here is simply 2 2 and then the thermal conductivity which is 393.011 and at the top or the numerator we also have the ln the, the natural logarithm of um, RO and then R1 so basically that's um, the ratio of the diameter of uh, the two 
um, values. But if we'll be using our uh, diameter um, instead of the radius or the red eye, then it will just be the same thing. So I'll be using the um, diameters that's 2.66 and 2.5 instead. So instead of you know dividing this all by the radius and we'll just get get the same answers. So we're pretty much done with this value. So finally we get this a1 over ao. So basically our a1 over ao is simply this um, ratio again because um, remember that's the lateral um, area that we're concerned. So that's pi dl and then this pi l will always be cancelled. So we're left with the ratio of diameter and then we divide this by h also that's 77.9565. Okay. So uh, most of the time, this uh, expression or the resistance offered by uh, the material and the heat that is or the um, resistance offered by the material through conduction is very, um, the contribution of for heat is not really that big. Kaya, or the, the contribution of the resistance is really not big. That's why, minsan nilalaglag natin to, sinaset na to sa zero. But for this sake, um, hindi ko na siya muna isaset sa zero. Kasi meron pa naman siya contribution. And then, yun. So, finally, we have UI. So, that's 26.6906 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So, if you would be um, disregarding this, you will get 26.692. And that's very close for this UI. Kasi kung mapansin nyo, um, heat um, transfer by heat exchange are usually governed by convection kasi fluids ang ating tinatanong dyan. Kaya, yun, dun sila masyado nagre-rely dun sa ating UI. But, um, in our previous problems, U, U is already given in general, kaya hindi natin kailangan kompetin yung overall heat transfer coefficient. But in this case, we need to like, um, find them, each one of them, depending on the construction and depend also depending on the condition of the outside and the inside fluid. So now, we, since we've done with our UI, and then um, based on our expression, Q is equal to UA delta T, we know very well na hindi tayo pwede maka-obtain ng Q natin kasi we need to find the temperature on the outlet. So this makes this um, a little tricky to use this one, but we'll be using another expression that is presented in your module which gives us the number of transfer units. So that's NTU. So basically in your handle, you can read something about this NTU, but um, to give you an idea about this NTU, this is a special parameter that um, we use in heat exchanger pag hindi possible na hanapin natin yung delta TM due to lack of information dun sa ating um, problem. So basically NTU is actually equal to UA, and then we have M, and then CP mean. So this um, MCP mean is simply the mass flow rate of the fluid that will give you um, a value that is minimum when multiplied with its CP. So the other are just two cases, um, M1 and then CP1 and then M2 and then CP2. So this one and two are, you can also say that ito yung um, equivalent dito sa hot and then yung other one is equivalent to the cold one. So, yan yung ating um, pagpipilian sa dalawa. Alin ba yung bibigay sa atin ng mas mababang value? So, if it if it is this hot, then yun yung, I mean, bakit ko inex yun? So, if it, if it is this hot, then siya yung magiging MCP min natin. But if it is the cold one, then that's our MCP min. And usually, this um, mass flow rate times the CP, this is equivalent to the C, um, C. And then, if it's the minimum value, then we add min for this one. And then, if it's the maximum, then we add max for this one. So, syempre, pwede siya magka-interchange yung dalawang yan. Depende dun sa magiging sagot nila. Kaya, hindi natin siya masasabi, depende lang siya sa sagot natin. Okay. So, in this problem, what will be, what will we be using? Okay. Is it the hot fluid or the cold fluid? So, you might be thinking na, um, siguro, sir, di that should be the cold fluid kasi yung ating specific capacity is lower. And that is true since um, yung ating specific capacity for the cold one is actually lower. 
but um, we need to consider the multiplier for this, which is the mass flow rate. And knowing na yung mass flow rate natin sa um, cold fluid, which is yung ating air, is unknown. Kasi we could assume na yung mass flow rate niya is sobrang laki kasi yung ating fluid is on the outside or the environment. So basically, you can quantify that because that's the surrounding. So basically, this C max approaches to our to infinity, knowing na M2 is uh, the surrounding itself. That's why we're left with the inside uh, fluid which is on the tube and that's the hotter fluid as C min. So in this case, we'll be using the MCP min for our um, uh, this expression. So in that way, we also have to use UI and then AI and then we have this mass flow rate for the hot fluid and then the CP of the hot fluid. So that's our expression for NTU. So again, we're using NTU right here because um, the data is not sufficient to answer the problem because hindi natin alam yung ating log mean temperature difference. So again, UI is actually equal to 26.6906. So we have here NTU. Um, let me just use another color. So we have NTU is equal to 26.6906. And then our AI is simply the, um, the area on the inside. So that's simply 2.5 over 100. And that's the lateral area. So we have pi. So that's pi d and then l. l is 3 meters. I'll not be adding the units now. Para um, wala tayong units dito. Kasi NTU is a dimensionless um, number again. So the mass flow rate, knowing that we have velocity, you can simply multiply this with the area, cross-sectional area of a diameter, and then we uh, uh, multiply this with the density. So knowing that the mass flow rate or the velocity is, um, I think it's 6. So that's 6. So that's 6. And then we multiply this with uh, the area, cross-sectional area. So that's 0 0.025 squared and then pi over 4. So that's this is 0 0.025. And then we have the here the density, so that's 1.5711. And then lastly, we have the density. I mean the um, call this the CP, so 1024.9579. So again, I would like to um, reiterate that I didn't use the cold temperature because we have to multiply these two and even though this CP is lower uh, M2 is very very high since it's the surrounding so CP max I mean C max approaches to infinity so we get here the, the NT or the number of transfer unit is actually equal to 1.3261 so in this case 1.3261 is our number of transfer unit and in your module you can see right here that the effective effectiveness can be equated um, with respect to the ratio of the C correspondingly with the number of transfer unit. So it says here in number one that considering the cold fluid becomes C min, that is the heat capacity rate of the cold fluid is lower, the effectiveness of the heat exchanger can be represented as this expression. And then for the number two, we have the hot fluid being the C min, the heat capacity rate. Um, don't be confused with this heat capacity rate kasi ang tinutukoy dyan it is heat capacity times the mass flow rate not just the heat capacity so um, sa problem na to you should know that we're on number 2 condition knowing that the hot fluid becomes our semen so we'll be using this um, effectiveness equation so yun since uh, nakuha na natin itong equation na to we'll be able to find the effectiveness of our um, our heat exchanger. So with this, E is equal to 1 minus E raised to negative N. So our N is 1.3261. And then we add 1 plus now C. C is the ratio of our mean and max. But remember, since the maximum actually approaches to infinity, 
we know very well that c becomes 0. And in this case, the denominator becomes 1 plus 0, which in turn just become 1. So the effectiveness now would be equal to 0 0.7345. So this is the effectiveness of our um, heat exchanger. And we know very well that effectiveness is actually an expression that can be related to um, the minimum temperature difference over the maximum temperature difference. Okay? So, yan yung ating uh, isang kaganda ng transfer unit sa atin. So, it is able to relate the effectiveness with our um, um, expression sa ating minimum heat capacity rate. Okay? So, knowing that this is the um, temperature dif difference sensible at the minimum, so we know lagi naman na um, let's start with the maximum temperature difference. So we always know that the maximum temperature difference is the inlet of the hot fluid and then the uh, inlet of the cold fluid. That's always given. But um, the minimum temperature difference, you can actually tell something about this. No? Usually it is the cold fluid, but there are cases wherein um, we have to consider na kung ano ba talaga yung maging difference niya in terms of um, the condition. So in this condition, actually, the temperature difference is brought by the initial temperature, which is the hot fluid, minus its outlet. So this happened because um, our pipe is exposed to the environment, which is 20 degrees Celsius, which is colder. So basically, kung malamig siya uh, on the outside, uh, the temperature difference that would uh, be contributing to this, um, the minimum temperature difference that would be contributing to this would be the difference between the inlet and then the outlet, okay? Because it is for sure, mas malaki yung maging temperature difference ng ating CI, which is inlet of this um, 20 degrees Celsius, papunta dun sa kanyang TCO. But, um, just remember, kung nalito kayo sa problem na to, just think of it as if, um, for, for such cases, ganito yung nangyayari. Pero the rest of heat exchanger would be that this should be um, T... CO um, and then minus TCI. So that's um, usually what happens for um, most of the time. But in this case, we'll be considering this um, scenario. So in this case, I can substitute THI, that's 200, and then um, I do not know THO, and then 200, and then minus 20. So that is equivalent to 0 0.7345. So upon substitution, I can get the value of THO, which is actually equal to 67.79 degrees Celsius. So this is the answer for the first question. Because the first question ask, uh, asks us about um, calculate the air temperature at exit from the tube. So the air on the tube is actually experiencing this um, decrease in temperature and that decrease in temperature is brought by uh, this um, surrounding air that's 20 degrees Celsius and we don't know for sure what is um, the mass flow rate of this one. I could have used the heat exchange theorem natin, uh, that's Q in is equal to Q out but we know very well na kung ang consider natin is yung other fluid which is on the outside we know that the mass flow rate is really high. So, ano ba yung value niya? So, we can just say for sure, kaya nag approach to sa infinity. So, hindi natin pwedeng mabalance yung ating heat in this case kasi nga, um, steady state condition doesn't uh, require us to um, give a certain assumption to sa ating mass flow rate in this case. So, yun for our HO. And then, the next problem or the next question asks us if what happens when we decrease the hot air in half. So decreasing the hot air in half, we know that the NTU is right here. So if we decrease natin to sa half, which becomes um, 3, let's make it red. So itong 6 at is magiging 3, so we decrease natin siya sa 3. So uh, this NTU, kung nasa baba siya, is tataas siya, so magiging 2 yung ating NTU. So basically yung ating um, number transfer unit would be 2 times 1.3261. So this becomes the second NTU for this problem. And then this is actually equivalent to 2.6522. Um, 
So now in this NTU, we substitute that value again to our expression of E na nagsisiro din ito kasi same lang naman yung ating C max at C min. It's always provided na uh, mas mawawa pa rin yung C min and then yung C max approaches to infinity. So by that, we can get a value of THO. Same procedure lang din dito. Um, e, by the way, E becomes um, equal to 0 0.9 so the idea is that the heat exchanger becomes um, more effective that's 0 0.9295 and then the outlet temperature is of course kung mas effective na yung ating heat exchanger lower na yung ating outlet which is 32.6893 um, degrees celsius so this is the second answer if we reduce that to 2 and basically hindi lang naman siya divided by 2 so if you just divide by 2 that's 33 but um, the idea is that it's a lot closer. I mean, it's close to that um, certain assumption. So this is the answer for question number one, and then this is the answer for question number two. Okay, so it's a very, it's quite a long solution. Pero yun na yung kabo ating heat exchanger. And using the net, net transfer unit to solve for such cases na hindi natin alam kung ano ba yung ating temperature gradient in both of them. And you might be thinking, bakit ito tayo gamit ng log mean temperature difference? And of course, yung ating um, correction factor. So to answer that, the first one is that um, the log mean temperature difference uh, is that the outlet temperature of our CO is, uh, we can't actually tell what is that certain value. So, kasi... Since 20 degrees Celsius on the outside is basically being considered, um, di naman siya constant, pero um, it's on the outside surface. So, the the effect of the heat exchange would be much greater than that compared with the change in the decrease of temperature from the hot to the, um, to the hotter air going down. I mean, to the hotter air um, lowering its temperature. So, if it's the colder air increasing in temperature, that's a higher value. So, pangalawa naman is that um, this cold air cannot be uh, evaluated using our general energy balance, that's Q in equals Q out, because hindi nga natin mag alam kung ano ba yung mass flow rate ng ating um, colder air on the asset because it is in the surrounding. So, basically, we're just considering um, an instant wherein our NTU could be able to predict how this um, minimum heat capacity rate would give us the difference in temperature. So in that case, we're considering our semen as the heat on the inside. But of course, kung halimbawa, um, may certain mass flow rate yan, hindi lang siya parang stagnant, I mean, hindi lang siya free air na nag -e exist dyan and then alam natin yung basta yung area kung saan siya nanggaling or mass flow rate then we'll be able to use C mean and C max na meron tayong value for that and then our computation would be uh, the same may iba lang ng konti yung ating equation for E and most probably yung ating uh, minimum temperature difference would be using TCO minus TCI instead of THI minus THO so you'll be able to find that and then madadad and kayo once na mag-solve kayo and then may mali dyan. So, usually, ganun yung nangyari sa unit operations. Once you meet a dead end, then probably you might be solving for a wrong answer or wrong, um, you might be getting a wrong computation along the way. Kaya, it's always um, necessary to check on the concepts and then have the idea of how this heat transfer works para mas mag-gets nyo siya um, habang sinosolve. Okay, so I think that's all for heat exchanger. Kasi um, ito yung parang pinaka medyo heat transfer pa dun sa pinanggalingan natin. Kasi itatransition nitong topic na to kayo mula dun sa ating convection, conduction, radiation through the unit operations natin which are the remaining, yung ating evaporation and crystallization. So dito siya mas, um, mas masaya tong discussions na to compared to sa heat exchanger. Kasi ewan, tong heat exchanger is medyo, ano pa siya, medyo more on heat transfer pa talaga siya. But, um, crystallization and evaporation would give us the idea of the material balance again. Na yun yung favorite ng medyo marami sa atin. 
Okay, so yun lang muna and then uh, stay safe guys.